I'm not really sure how to start this video when talking about Indiana Jones and the dial of dial D for depends. When I walked out of the theater, I honestly felt nothing for this film. And a lot of this probably started with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones is a pulp era character and he only really works within that time frame. As soon as you push him into the 50s or the 60s and he puts on that outfit, he just completely looks out of place. That outfit is a product of its time. And it's why that character works so well in the 1930s and the 1940s, because he is a pulp action adventure character. And he needs to be in a pulp action adventure setting. And that's just the foundational issues of the problem. I haven't even started talking about the movie yet. And trust me, there is a lot, a lot, a lot, 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 lot of problems. Issue number one is the fact that they gave him the Han Solo treatment. Imagine that. Another Harrison Ford character being a bad dad because we have never seen this before in uh, The Force Awakens. Blade Runner. And now for a second time in Indiana Jones. And he is estranged from his lady love, just like in The Force Awakens. Blade Runner. And of course, Indiana Jones for the second time. And he's a washed up loser, just like in, I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going with this, so I can just stop here. Another deconstruction of a Harrison Ford character, most of which took place with Lucas Films, and then another one that was not Lucas Films. But this is a theme that we keep seeing in modern Hollywood, specifically coming from Disney, the deconstruction of past great characters like Indiana Jones, Han Solo, and Luke Skywalker. It's as if somebody's trying to sabotage the legacy of Steven Spielberg and George motherfucking Lucas. I wonder who that could be. Nothing? Okay. But ultimately the joke is going to be on Kathleen Kennedy because this movie's not going to play well in the box office, folks. Let's let's be honest. On its preview night, it netted seven point two million dollars, two million less than The Flash. And that was a god awful movie. Good times. And before you Disney dick writers start giving me shit in the comments saying, well, the weekend's not over yet. It can go up. I was right about The Flash and I'm going to be right about this one, too. Suck it. If you've paid attention to the Reddit spoilers, you pretty much know what is going to happen in this movie because it's exactly what happens in the movie. And honestly, the first 20 minutes of the film is the best parts because it somewhat feels like an Indiana Jones film. It takes place at the tail end of World War II, and Indy is trying to recover the Spear of Longinus, also known as the Spear of Destiny. But it turns out that it's a fake. And instead, there's the Antica Theorem, which is the Dial of Destiny that Archimedes created. And they end up recovering that instead. The thing that annoys me about this is that, much like the problems with the Crystal Skull, what we've been dealing with are artifacts that belong to the Christian faith, such as the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, and the Spear of Destiny. But the spear is a fake. And instead, they want to do something that is more scientific. And to remove that element of religion and mysticism and magic in the occult just seems out of place. And, and it doesn't work because of the three previous films that built itself on mystical objects like the Shankara Stones. It's the same issue I had with the Crystal Skull because it dealt with aliens kind of space between spaces that's that's all i gotta say the world of indiana jones is a world where i can believe that the mummy's curse is an actual curse and not something that can be rationalized away with science and that's what made it fun and sadly all those things that made indiana jones indiana jones is missing from this film and that's what makes it suck so badly it's the reason why I'm like, meh, I don't care. And I can't help but feel seeing a movie about Indiana Jones pursuing the Spear of Destiny seems like a much more interesting film. Think about it, guys. 
He's chasing after the spear because the Nazis are trying to get it back into the hands of Adolf Hitler so he can revive the war and potentially win. And it's up to Indy to stop that from happening so the war can end and Hitler can lose. But no, what we get is a sad, broken down old man being led around by a snarky brunette who's British because we've never seen that before coming out of Lucasfilms ever. What is Kathleen Kennedy's obsession with brunettes from the UK? I mean, it, is it like a fetish? Does she want to be British? I mean, seriously, this lady has a type, it seems. And she keeps wanting to put them into films for reasons. And I have to say, and stay with me, folks. Baby Waller Bridge was perfectly cast if you want a snarky, annoying, know-it-all, unlikable female character. She plays it very well because I'm sure that's basically what she is. And the sad part, that's not even the worst of it. Honestly, you could take Indiana Jones completely out of this film and the ending literally would not change because the Nazis die in a plane crash. Bowler, who is I'm guessing a stand-in for Werner von Braun, who is the guy who kickstarted NASA and got us into space, is basically him. And he wants the dial so he can go back in time and kill Adolf Hitler and take his place and lead the Nazis to victory because he believed that Hitler defeated himself and not, not the Allies. I'm sure that plays a part. Hitler did make a lot of mistakes during the war, which ultimately led him to defeat. But yeah, so um, he gets the Antikytherium and uses it to turn back time, except it leads him to the wrong place. Instead, it takes him to the Battle of Syracuse during the time of Archimedes, and they promptly crash the plane because uh, apparently they don't know how to make the plane go up because the Romans shoot them with ballistas and end up taking down the plane. And Indiana Jones had absolutely nothing to do with that. And Indiana Jones just kind of feels like he's along for the ride for Helena's adventure. That's Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. Like I said, you could take him out of the entire film and it wouldn't have changed the damn thing. And towards the end, Indy gets shot right here. That's basically where the blood stain is. And I'm pretty sure because of the reshoots and everything that he was probably supposed to die. But when they changed it, they said he got shot in the shoulder, which is over here and not life threatening over here, probably would have grazed his heart and killed him at some point. And finally, we get the coup de gras because they're back in the time of Archimedes. Indiana Jones is like, you know, I, I just want to stay here and watch the Battle of Syracuse and die because he's a broken old man who has nothing. And then Helena knocks his ass out and drags him back to the present where his wife shows back up and they magically rekindle their relationship because Helena fixed Indiana Jones. Shoot me in the fucking heart. This is what happens when you give a bitter old hack the franchises of better men. And I literally say that better men because that's something Kathleen Kennedy would never be. And the only thing that she can do as a final fuck you to Spielberg and Lucas is to finally go and destroy the very last property, Indiana Jones. So I guess the cycle of violence at this point is complete. Great job. I mean, come on. It's not like we're actually gonna get that Ray Palpatine film because I'm pretty sure that the numbers for this film is gonna be disastrous. And this movie roughly cost them over $300 million and it's gonna take roughly about a billion just to break evening. And we're not even getting close to that number. And before someone's like, you know what the fuck you're talking about? Yeah, actually, I kind of do. The budget is 300 million ish. And you have to factor in other things such as marketing and then the box office cut that goes to the theaters. Because when people see that number, they're like, oh, Disney basically made their money back on Lucasfilm with one movie. It's like you're full of shit. That's not how this works. They may not fire Kathleen Kennedy, but they may not let her go forward with anything else. But I could be vastly wrong at the incompetence of Disney. That's probably an understatement of the century. If you enjoyed this video, I have another one popping up on screen. Go check it out. I'll catch you next time, folks.